right there. All right. Live on Facebook. Um, okay, let me just move something around. I was trying to Zoom and go live from Zoom. And that did not work out so well. So I'm going to bring Facebook up on my computer so I can see who's popping on. And that would be so good to see you. Oh no, it's new Facebook. That's okay. All right. Let's see. Hi, Lori. Good to see you here. Turn my volume down. That way I can respond. There we go. All right. Well, I don't have a specific guest today, as you can see. It's me, just flying solo. So I thought that I would talk today about um, just some things that, that I have done that have made my life a little easier. Um, you know, we're, we're going through a lot. You know, we're going through a lot as a country. We are going through a lot personally. And so I just thought that I would share where I was ever the most hung up on my spiritual journey. I'm gonna, the, the one place, like I was super, super hung up. And when I got this idea, I it helped kind of smooth out the other places where I got hung up, okay, when I finally got this one idea. And that is the idea of thoughts are things, right? This is kind of a, a new thought thing, it's a new age thing, it's a spiritual thing. We hear thoughts are things, um, what you think about, you bring about, um, change your thinking, change your life. And what happens is that starts looking like, well, if you just think something, everything changes. And it does eventually, <laughs> not like right in the minute. And so like for myself, I have been, I've been interested in metaphysics and new agey stuff for like 30 years. I know I was just a baby, <laughs> but I didn't start actually applying it to my life till about 10 years ago, like treating it more seriously. I didn't start really getting this until about three years ago. And, all right, and I'm going to tell you, I've been a minister for, for like longer. I've been a minister, like I was a minister starting in 2012, like I, for a new thought church. I mean, I was kind of getting it, but it was like finally in 2017, it was just like kaboom, okay? And it was the foster things. And so I'm going to explain that, how that works. Because when we think, oh, if I just think about something and then everything will change, and then it doesn't then we feel bad. And sometimes like in our spiritual circles, we might get told, well, if you weren't so negative, this bad thing wouldn't have happened to you. If you weren't neg if you weren't thinking negatively, you wouldn't have gotten sick or you wouldn't have whatever, right? And if you really wanted this great thing and it hadn't come yet, you might hear, well, you're not thinking positively enough. And that I'm just here to say like, there's part of that that is, is kind of true, and I'm going to explain that part. But, okay, so thoughts are things. We look at here, first of all, we have our thought. Okay, so I'm going to just go like that. We have our thought, then we have our idea. I'm sorry, the manifestation of that thought. So we have our divine inspiration, our divine idea, and then we have, like, the manifestation or the outcome of that. Now, in between point A, where we get the divine idea, and then point B, where we manifest it. It's in between these two spaces. There is a lot of stuff happening. Okay, lots of stuff happening. So I want you to imagine that you were going to um, bake a cake, right? I'm just thinking of cake lately because it was my mom's birthday uh, recently. And she wanted a cake. Well, of course she wanted a cake. Everybody loves cake on their birthday. But I, um, I don't like baking. I don't like cooking. Um, I love cake, but I don't like making one. So I asked her, started off with the divine idea. You could call it divine. Cake is divine. I said, Mom, what kind of cake do you want for your birthday? She said, carrot cake. 
So in my mind, I could see a carrot cake. I know how to make a carrot cake. I've done it before. It's a good cake, but it's from scratch and it is a lot of work. That would involve between the idea, carrot cake, and its outcome, there would be a trip to the store. There would be gathering together all the supplies. When I make a carrot cake, you have to grade actual carrots to put them in the cake. And I guess I could buy pre-graded, you know, that's fine. But so there's some effort there. Now I opted to go to a bakery called Nothing Bunt Cakes that's in Redlands. And, um, my, um, and my mom was happy with that idea. <laughs> so I still though, I couldn't just think cake and have it appear in my life. I had to get in my car. I had to drive down there. I had to stand in line because they're, they're physically distancing. Only two people allowed in the shop at a time. And then I, um, got inside. I placed my order. Well, then they told me that they had to prep it. And so I had to go sit outside and wait for about a half hour. And then I got my cake and then I went back to my car and then I drove home. So between the idea of the cake and getting the actual cake, there was all of this activity. Okay. So there is a lot of stuff going on in there. And sometimes I, what I used to think is like, I would have this divine idea, exciting idea. I'd be really happy about the idea, but then I thought the universe would do all the work. The universe doesn't do all the work for us. It inspires us though, that next thing to do, right? But then we have to do that thing. Now there is another more uh, nefarious thing that can happen instead of us just thinking, well, the universe should do all the work. We might actually be talked into the idea that we're not good enough to actually do this thing. And that happens with what in unity we call the little me. And it is that little, in some traditions it's called the, well, biblically, it's called the adversary, right? It's Jesus wrestled with the adversary in the wilderness for 40 days. Um, I've heard it called the saboteur. In some um, psychology circles, it's called the ego. In some spiritual circles, it's called the ego. I really like saboteur the best because it wants to sabotage us. The moment we get the, the divine idea, it wants to sabotage that idea. Because a divine idea is going to be exciting. A divine idea is going to change our life on some level. It may not be a huge giant change, but on some level, our life will change. The saboteur, or our little me, just that little devil sitting on our shoulder, it doesn't want anything to change. It wants things to stay the same because it, it equates sameness to safety. And it's not. I'm sorry, I'm sitting by a window and it's like, there's a lot of happening out there. <laughs> so what it can do, like, and this is when you've experienced your own saboteur. You get an idea. You get really excited by it, but then like five seconds is all it takes, right? Your saboteur pops in there. You get about five seconds to take action, but if five seconds passes your saboteur, that's how long it takes the saboteur or your little me to get a wonderful excuse that you will totally buy into. So you have this divine idea. You're very excited and you, you think, okay, I'm going to think about that. And then all of a sudden you think, well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm smart enough to do that. Or I don't know, what would happen if I failed? Well, what if that was really hard and it was like taking up all my time? And well, you know, and then, okay, or it can actually be mean. And it'll be that voice in there in your head. Who do you think you are to do that? And you're not, you, you would never pull that off. You couldn't pull that off. If you try to do that and you fail, everybody will make fun of you, right? Your tribe, they don't want to see you. They don't want to see you do that. And you fail and you're just, going to, you're just going to be ashamed and you'll never be able to show your face in public again. So that little adversary, the little saboteur, it will hurt you. Like it'll be mean. It'll actually be mean to get you to give up. Because it doesn't want you moving forward. But there's another way that it will interact that actually will make perfect sense to you. And it doesn't have to make you feel bad. It won't. It might even make you try to make you feel good about yourself. 
So you get your divine idea. And you think, oh man, that would be really cool. I would love to do that. And I think that would make a difference in my tribe and in my community. And then, okay, your little saboteur, it says, oh my God, yeah, you'd be so perfect for that. But first of all, go get this training. Take this workshop. Read this book, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to tell you to do something first so that you put off that divine idea into the future, okay? What well, my little saboteur used to say, and this would be, let's say, hmm, I guess it was like 10 years ago. Like I'm also a singer songwriter and I love going places and playing my guitar. Well, I didn't do it for a while because I put weight, I put on weight and I was embarrassed and, and felt ashamed. And that's what my little saboteur, when somebody would invite me, my little saboteur would say, no, you know what? You need to lose 20 pounds, 40 pounds first. And I was like, okay, yeah. Well, you know, the years went by and I wasn't losing any weight. So finally, finally, I had to say, well, you know what? If I want to sing ever again, I'm just going to have to go play while I'm fat. Okay, so I did. Well, then my little saboteur just came up with something else to try to make me feel bad about myself or something else. Oh, like what it would say. Well, you need to record a CD first. You need to get some more original music. Um, the covers that you play right now, they're not good enough. You need a whole new batch of covers, right? So it's, it's an idea that at first it makes sense, but it's really our saboteur that's trying to keep us from doing that, okay? So I'm gonna say the thing that, um, the thing that, the first thing that I learned is that where it started making a difference, where I started actually getting a divine idea and I would, I, I, this whole thoughts or things idea was making more sense as I realized that um, I did need to change how I was thinking, how I was thinking. Because this is another way that we, our thoughts create our reality, is say that, um, say that somebody's feeling victimized or they're used to blaming outside circumstances for why things aren't working out. Okay, then they're gonna, they're gonna kind of tend to keep doing that. And so they, they'll get a divine idea and then they won't act on it because of something out here is not perfect. And then it won't work out for them. Um, I had, it was interesting, years ago, I, I knew these two different ladies. They did not know each other, but they both had something very interesting in common. And that, that was that they were both, um, they really wanted, like the top of their list, the thing they wanted to do before they died was to uh, go to Great Britain, like travel Great Britain, go to start in Scotland, go all the way like Ireland, Great Britain, Wales, like the whole shebang, okay? And um, one of these gals was on a, a limited income because she was already retired and she just had her social security. The other gal, she had a job, but it, you know, I guess it wasn't like a terrible job. She wasn't working minimum wage, but she did, you know, she, she lived like and spent all her money every month. So both of these gals wanted to go to Great Britain. And what happened was that the one gal who was actually on the limited income, she put together a plan. And she decided, okay, she was going to get there. And so she started saving and she did other things to earn some extra money. But like a couple of years later, she ended up going to Great Britain. Like she saved the money and she was there for like a long time. Like not, I mean, not crazy long time, but like four weeks or six weeks or something. Because she just committed to the plan and she followed through on it. Right, she treated her life as a life that was taking her to Great Britain for, for six weeks. Now the other gal, she never did do anything. She thought about it, she talked about it, you know, how she just really wished she could go to Great Britain. But it never just panned out because she never did anything about it. But see, this is where our self-talk will keep us from doing the things we love. So this is, again, this is another way thoughts create our reality. It's through our self-talk. 
Okay, the one woman would say, this who wanted to go to Great Britain, man, it's so expensive. How am I ever supposed to do that? Why does everything have to be so expensive? Well, I'm just a regular person with a regular job, regular expenses, you know, I'm just never gonna get there. Man, maybe I should choose something else. Maybe I should just go to Palm Springs for the weekend instead, I could do that. So her thoughts, she had a mental tendency, which was a lack based, and she never got there. Where the other woman, she was a pretty positive person. She was. And she was, I mean, she would do things like she would clean bathrooms and <laughs> like run errands for people. Like she found some really creative ways to make extra money. And she was always talking about like, when I get to Great Britain, and she had a collection of, this is what I'm going to go do when I get to Great Britain. Like she had all the pamphlets, maps. She knew everything. She knew everything she'd be doing as soon as she got there. So that's another way that our thoughts become things. Our thoughts become our experience because we behave a certain way based on our thinking. Now, I wanted to share this pamphlet. It's like so cool. I'll share the um, link for it because it's free. You can get it free. Um, but it's just like nine pages if you get the, um, just the PDF version. But it's The Seven Day Mental Diet by Emmett Fox. And I love Emmett Fox. Now, in New Thought, we talk about changing our thinking, and we talk about positive thinking. And But we're not, it's really not about, well, if you just think positive, all your cares will go away. If you just think positive, you'll be super healthy. If you just think positive, you'll be thinner, younger, smarter, richer. It, it's not that at all. Now, there are some things, like seriously, there are just some things you cannot think your way into changing. You can't. Like I'm 5'9". No amount of positive thinking will change how tall I am. Like if I really, really wanted to be one of these little petite gals, there's no amount of thinking I could do or positive thinking that would make me 5'2". Right? Some things, like they're part of our physical DNA and they're not going to be changed how tall we are. Um, growing a tail or growing a unicorn horn, right? There's some things positive thinking won't change. Now we also have, there are some health issues that are just not changed like that with positive thinking. Okay, so it's not about that, but, but so often people think that it is that they decide, well, I'm not interested. That stuff doesn't work. I still got a cold last month. All right, so it's not about that. So in the Seven Day Mental Diet by Emmett Fox, um, he does, he talks about how everything in our life um, comes from our past thinking, right? And this is true, right, to an extent. Our thinking got us here because we thought we were capable of something or we thought we weren't. We thought something was possible for us or we didn't think it was possible, okay? Um, and I used to not think things were possible for me. I used to think that the universe wasn't paying attention to me. And when I started getting this idea, like I seriously, I got all fired up to be the unity minister here. Like I got all fired up and here I am. Like, and it wasn't easy. People asked me like, well, you know, when you knew you wanted to be a minister and then you got your job at unity of Ukaipa, like, how did you do that? Like, and they wanted in three easy steps. Well, I'm like, well, go back to 2012. And they're like, mm, no, that's too much work, <laughs> right? There's a lot of effort in here, right? Between point A and point B. Um, okay, so he also says you cannot have one kind of mind in another kind of environment. We can't. We can't be victimized and blaming our conditions and limited by our conditions and... And, and while we're thinking positively, right? I mean, did I say that right? If we're blaming conditions outside of ourselves, we're not going to suddenly have a great experience, okay? Um, he says you've got to change your mind, but then the conditions change also. We're changing our mind by remembering this one thing. God is all things, and that means me. God is everything that's ever been, everything that's yet to be. God is every condition, situation, person, place, thing, every event, every idea. Okay, the inspiration that led to beautiful pieces of music and, and poetry 
and books and movies. Okay, those all came from an inspiration. And the inspiration is source energy in motion. Source energy in motion. Okay, so you start changing your mind about things by, by reminding yourself, wait, God is all things. And that means me. And that means the idea that I had. And so wait, I don't want to, I don't want to let my little saboteur talk me out of this. So what can I do about it? Right? So God is all things. It's the inspiration. It's also the means. It's the guidance one step at a time. It's all things. All right. Um, so this is where, like in the book of Romans, Paul uh, says, do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The pattern of the world is the habitual negative thinking, the, the complaining, right? For like for people, if you go out right now and it's like, oh my gosh, if you bring up the election, it's like, oh, this is a tough election. And somebody else is like, oh yeah, everybody sucks. There's no good candidate, right? Well, this is like, there's habitual thinking out there, right? And it's just, it's on autopilot thinking. That is the condition of the world, to be on autopilot thinking. Everything is hard. That's autopilot thinking. Women have it harder. Okay, black people are not treated fair. This is autopilot thinking. It's the kind of thinking that needs to be addressed to be changed. Okay? Um, he also says that we can train ourselves to do this. This is possible. That's why he calls it the seven-day mental diet. He, he says seven days. <laughs> seven days. So it's important to remember that we cannot change conditions specifically until we change our thinking. Now think about right now, we can't change the condition of the pandemic. Now we can be mad and we can be frustrated and we can think, oh my God, I just can't wait to go back to how things used to be. We, so we can get stuck in limitation thinking. It's not going to make the, the pandemic pass any faster. It's still a condition. So what changes is that we start seeing it differently. Well, this is leading to a new normal. It's we're, Our planet is recalibrating right now. And well, what could I do differently to you know, take advantage of what's happening right now? Like, is there something new I could do? There is a, um, here in Yukaipa, well, and I live in Redlands, but there is a, um, a place that brews its own beer. I'm gonna say it's called Hangar 24, but sometimes I call it Hangar 18, which is the alien movie. Um, but right at the beginning of the pandemic, when you couldn't buy masks and you couldn't buy hand sanitizer, they started producing hand sanitizer. It's like they started brewing hand sanitizer. They saw a need and they fulfilled it. It's like, well, this is what we're going to do. And yeah, so we may not be able to change certain conditions. You can't change the weather, right? You can't change if it's 110 degrees outside. You can decide to move. Or you can decide that there are ways that you can handle it, right? And so you just do things differently. So he says, for seven days, you must not allow yourself to dwell for a single moment on any kind of negative thought. You must watch yourself as a cat watches a mouse. And don't allow your mind to dwell on anything that's not positive, constructive, optimistic, or kind. Now, he also says that this doesn't mean that we go into denial about something or that we are faking positivity or not being authentic. Um, it's if the thought pops in, don't dwell on it. Don't lament about it. I'll tell you something that happened to me. I'm way up here today. I was just driving along and I was chatting out loud to myself in the car like I do sometimes. And actually just in a real cheerful mood, like things in my life are just going so well and, and I'm just very happy. And I come to a four-way stop sign, <clears throat> and there's a, another guy, you know, who's coming this way, and I'm going that way. Well, I start to pull out, and just as I start to pull out, and he did get there first. I, I will say that. But see, we were both going straight, so no big deal. I need a drink, sorry. Ugh. Anyway, I start to pull out. Then he turns on his left turn sing signal, right? His blinker. And I was just kind of like, okay, well, he was there first. So I just stopped. I, I mean, I got about three feet out of the intersection before I saw my brakes on. Then he's waving his hands at me. And I, it wasn't the kind.
kind of wave like, you know, well, just come on. It didn't look like that. Well, the next thing I know, he's flipping me off. As he's turning left in front of me, he's flipping me off. And I was just kind of like, what? <laughs> like, I didn't get it. I'm like, dude, you, you're the one that didn't have your signal on. You know, I should have been flipping you off. But anyway, I pulled away from that experience and I was like, I was shocked and I was stunned and I was hurt. And then I was like, man, doesn't this guy know like there's so much conflict right now and you could just be, just be nice for one flipping minute. I mean, good God. Right. And, and I just was like, I was really getting upset about it. But I was, of course, I always have the four agreements in my head, right? Don't take things personally. And I remind myself all the time, God is all things, and that means me, and that means that guy. And so I just had to send him a blessing. like, And I didn't want to send it, but I was like, okay, angels, help me. Just send a blessing to that guy for me. <laughs> if you would just handle that for me, because really right now what I would just like is for him to just trip and, and break his nose, okay, or something like that. I would like, I would like somebody to pee in his Cheerios. Um, and so I had to just not dwell on it. But now I acknowledged that it hurt my feelings. Okay, we acknowledge things. I was obviously, it triggered something because I had an extreme reaction to it. I wasn't just like, oh, somebody's having a bad day, <laughs> which I wish I would have, but I was one, obviously, you know? So we don't entertain them. Okay, we don't keep turning to them. And I just kept telling myself, I was like, okay, Deanna, two minutes ago, you were in a fabulous mood and you're going to get in a fabulous mood again. You've been flipped off to before, right? People have flipped you off before because sometimes you're a crazy driver. Not in a long time. And so I had to just stop thinking on it. I had to just stop. There's nothing I could do about it. I acknowledged, okay, yeah, my feelings were hurt. It sucked that it happened. What can I do about it? Nothing. So there's not a thing unless I want to turn around and go chase him down. Okay, so... We don't dwell on it, okay? So here's here's what he says, right? In our seven-day mental diet. The thing to do when a negative thought presents itself is just turn away from it. Turn away from the newspaper, right? Which we don't have newspapers anymore, but what can we turn away from? Social media. We can turn away from social media. Um, turn the thought out. Turn away from the unkind letter, the stupid remark, or... <laughs> the what not, right? So I had to turn away from that what not. And I just had to simply start thinking on other things. Okay, now let's see. That was two and a half hours ago that that happened. And I have to say that really I've been, I've been okay with that for, like it hasn't bothered me since I got here to Unity. So 15, 10, 15 minutes after it happened, I was done. Okay, I was done. Now, dwelling, what is this? Okay, dwelling on things, he compares it to, like if you've ever sat in front of a beautiful fireplace and there's a roaring fire and a little hot cinder flies out and it lands on your sleeve. Now, if you flick it off right away, like there's probably minimal damage. Your sleeve may not even be damaged yet. But... If you let the cinder sit there on your sleeve, okay, and this is us totally lamenting over that thought over and over again, the cinder will burn through the sleeve, and if it burns through the sleeve, then it'll burn your arm. It'll burn your arm. And so that's what's happening when we keep entertaining the negative thoughts. Positive thinking is not about ignoring problems. It's not about going into denial. It's about just not giving these negative things happening, the negative conditions happening, it's about not giving them power in our life, okay? So, let's see. Yeah, just not giving them power, okay? So, anyway, that's just what I wanted to talk about today. That's the thing, finally, that started making things makes sense is understanding between thoughts and things there's a lot of activity between thoughts and things our little adversary 
is going to try to talk us out of doing the thing that we want to do. Between the thought and the manifestation, we could go down a negative path. We could get caught up in negative thinking and negative events, which will limit us. It'll keep us from remembering God is all things, and that means me, and that means the condition. So turning away from the negative things, turning away from those, not ignoring them, not pretending they don't exist, but walking by faith instead of walking by sight is to remember God is all things and that means me. That means the conditions. That means where I'm struggling. That means God is everywhere present and there's a solution to be found somewhere in all of that. There is a solution to be found. Okay, so I hope that that was helpful. Um, I don't see any comments, so, oh wait, here we go. Hi there. Oh, thanks for saying hi, Lori. <laughs> and hi, Ginger. It's nice to see you here. So anyway, I am done now. It's It's been our half hour. Thank you so much for joining me today on Light It Up Wednesdays, where we find the joy and get the lesson so that we can be the light. Right? It's time, man. We're here to bring the big light to the game. And we just do that through our awareness. And the first and most powerful step in all that is remembering that God is all things, and that means me. And also God is bigger than anything in its way. Right? And that means it's bigger than any condition. That's why in these crazy conditions right now, that's why there are people out there thriving and doing really, really well because they're turning into that God source within them. All right. You guys take care and have a wonderful rest of your day. And we'll see you later. Bye.